It was the summer of 2012 when anthropology professor Jason de Leon and his students found Maricela. De Leon was conducting a study in the Sonoran Desert that stretches across the southwest United States. They would often find items left over from the migrants crossing over the U.S. border. Shoes, socks, backpacks, water bottles, and sometimes human bones. On this day, a student cried out for De Leon. When he rushed over, the professor saw what appeared to be a woman's corpse lying face down in the dirt. The corpse had long black hair and a scrunchie around its wrist. It was intact, but had become bloated after several days exposed to the elements, and the body hissed from the release of intestinal gases. The team covered the corpse with a blanket to shield it from the circling vultures overhead and called the authorities. When they arrived five hours later with a stretcher, they turned the woman's body to reveal her face, a face that struck De Leon to his core. He wrote, as her body turns, I see what is left of her face. The mouth is a gnarled purple and black hole that obscures the rest of her features. Whatever beauty and humanity that once existed in her face has been replaced by a stone-colored ghoul stuck in mid-scream. It's a look you can never get away from. After examination of the body and a lot of legwork, De Leon learned that this was the body of Mericela Awipoya, a 31-year-old Ecuadorian woman who had attempted to cross the desert to reach the United States. She was a mother of three children and had left Ecuador alone by herself in hopes of sending money home to her children, children that were literally starving. With her death, Maricela became one of an estimated 10,000 people to die trying to cross the border from Mexico to the U.S., a number that is vastly underreported by the U.S. government. But why are so many people dying? Is the government aware this is happening? Yes, they are. And, um... They're into it. Their plan is working. It's not good. Border crossings in the southern U.S. used to be much more lax than they are now. People would live in Mexico, go to work in the morning in Texas, and come back home at night. But there was a nationwide push to be tougher on immigration, and the Border Patrol had to produce results, to the point that high school students in El Paso, Texas, near the Mexican border, U.S. citizens, mind you, were being assaulted and interrogated by Border Patrol agents just because they were brown. Where are you coming from, son? Uh, my locker? So these high schoolers are tired of this treatment, so they sued the Border Patrol and won, which is an incredible accomplishment, but just wait, this is why we can't have nice things. On September 18th, 1993, the new sector chief of El Paso Border Patrol, a man named Silvestre Reyes, is trying a new idea. He formed what was essentially a human border wall of agents that stretched across the border for 20 miles. The operation came to be called Operation Hold the Line and later Operation Gatekeeper. Long story short, this plan worked and ended up becoming hugely influential. Janet Reno, Bill Clinton's attorney general and the person in charge of implementing all new immigration policy, loved this guy Reyes, calling him a, quote, special hero of hers. Arizona and California joined Texas in implementing these fortified borders between big cities, the major urban checkpoints that migrants would naturally move through. Plus, the checkpoints themselves became rigid and unyielding, even to those in trouble or seeking asylum. So what are these asylum seekers or work seekers going to do now that these previously available border crossings are unavailable to them? Well, they're going to attempt to enter the United States via geographically harsher regions, like the punishing Sonoran Desert where Maricela and thousands like her died. Because of these new policies, since the mid-90s, the number of migrant deaths have skyrocketed. The official number of recovered human remains is reported to be in the hundreds, but I'll explain why in a second. It could be ten times that number. This is government strategy. The hope is that people will see how dangerous crossing this inhospitable terrain is and how many people have died and just decide not to do it themselves. The actual plan is called prevention through deterrence, which means deaths are a success. Deaths are a sign that the plan is working. But this doesn't take into account the tenacity, even desperation, of people fleeing starvation, persecution, and poverty, even if they have to cross through the punishing 100-plus-degree desert. 
So this is why the deaths may be much higher than they think. You might be thinking, okay, I've recently binge watched all your videos, Caitlin, and I know that if a person dies in a hot and arid climate, the body will maybe mummify. So if thousands of people are allegedly dying in the desert, there must be mummies everywhere, right? Well, what we're not taking into account in this particular region is the creatures. In 2013, Professor De Leon's team set out to study the decomposition of bodies in the Sonoran Desert. They acquired some dead pigs, which are commonly used as stand-ins for human bodies, dressed them in clothes typical to what migrants wear, and placed them in the desert where migrant bodies are typically found, like in the shade under a tree or under a pile of rocks, which would be a quick way to bury someone in the desert. They set up motion-activated cameras to watch the pigs, and then waited. That night, the cameras were triggered quickly, and they see a vulture standing by the pig under the tree, just watching it. A couple hours later, the camera came on again, and there were eight vultures tearing at the pig. Within hours, the vultures had yanked the clothing off the pig and were ripping its body apart. By noon of the fifth day, the vultures were carrying off limbs and fighting over intestines. By the ninth day, what remained of the carcass had been dragged 20 meters up a hill, picked clean, and the bones scattered. And the pigs safely under the rocks? <laughs> well, within 24 hours, the vultures and other animals, including dogs, had gotten under the rocks and tore the body apart. The makeshift grave had actually served to cook the body in the heat, which sped up the dismemberment process. Ants were observed chipping off little bits of bone that laid out in the open and carrying them away to their anthill. Eventually, nothing remained of the remains. And that is how people disappear in the desert. Sometimes an intact or relatively intact body is recovered, like Medicella's. But even in that lucky case, the body might be too desiccated to get a fingerprint off of. And that's where Dr. Alejandro Hernandez Cardenas and Dr. Bruce Anderson come in. Dr. Hernandez Cardenas is a dentist and forensic odontologist in Juarez, Mexico. He garnered attention for creating a secret solution that he soaks desiccated corpses in in order to identify them. After soaking the body in what he calls his jacuzzi, thanks for that image, the body can be brought back to a shockingly fresh state, allowing for fingerprinting and visual identification by birthmarks, wounds, or tattoos. In one case, Dr. Hernandez Cardenas rehydrated the two-year-old corpse of a hit-and-run victim to a point that it practically looked newly dead. That's a corpse that had been a corpse for two years, not a baby corpse. An old corpse. Made new! Across the border at the Pima County Medical Examiner's Office in Tucson, Arizona, Dr. Anderson has developed a similar method using a non-secret solution of sodium hydroxide to plump up the desiccated remains. Dr. Anderson doesn't submerge a whole body, only a finger or a hand, but the sodium hydroxide will plump up the appendage enough to get a fingerprint. It's a delicate balance because the body can only be submerged for so long before the sodium hydroxide dissolves it, like it does during the alkaline hydrolysis process. Just to bring it all together. It's obvious there are people doing incredible work with identification and recovery of migrant bodies, but the fact remains that people are needlessly dying. Organizations like the San Diego-based group Border Angels leave jugs of water along migration routes in the desert near the California-Mexico border. That precious water is often the difference between life and death. For those who don't get to water in time and don't make it through the desert alive, there are groups like Aguillas del Desierto, or Eagles of the Desert, who regularly comb the desert looking for the bodies of migrants, and the nonprofit Colibri Center for Human Rights, which works with families, medical examiners, and forensic scientists to search for and hopefully identify missing individuals. But until the government's tactics for border security change, everything else is just damage control. This is not my partisan political rant, by the way. Yeah, we know that Trump is the build the wall, separate the children from the parents guy, but you heard me, it was the Clinton administration that's responsible for prevention through deterrence. It's okay to disagree on immigration laws and policy, but like we all tend to agree that children shouldn't be kept in cages, I hope we all agree that people should not be dying by the thousands, horribly, some completely gone without a trace leaving desperate families behind. 
I told you back in April that I was going to experiment with monetizing these videos and donating that ad revenue to a charity. Well, that's been slow going because not a lot of my videos qualify for advertising. So even though the channel itself is doing fantastic, we had 5 million views just last month. Uh, the last five months, we've only made about $6,000 total. And you wonder why I use Patreon. But the full $6,000 will be split and donated to both the Colibri Center and Border Angels. I'm also personally going to be donating and I encourage you to as well, if you're able. The links are in the description. I wonder if this video will be monetized. Thank you to Jason De Leon. His book, Land of Open Graves is incredible. Another book, The Devil's Highway, I also loved. Loved is a weird word since these books are full of rage and despair, but they're very good. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Dear Mrs. Doty, the image of pigs wearing sneakers is not suitable for advertisers.